Oh, here we go. We got a bunch of Ben 10 inspired Lego creations today. And they're so, so good. They're going to blow your mind and inspire you. Now, I normally post this show on Saturdays, but I had to post this early because this collab dropped last night and I really, really want to talk about it. Okay, so let's take a look at some brilliant mocks today, inspired by the awesome TV show Ben 10. Starting off with Four Arms by Anderson Builder. Oh, this is fantastic. It's a huge mock, but you know, this larger scale, I think it really allows Anderson Builder to just nail the design of Four Arms. I mean, look at that head design, using key orange dots quarter tiles for the eyes, having an open mouth there that reveals what appears to be a white hero core up the top for one of the bits of teeth. And then underneath, we've got more teeth built with this two by two round jumper tile, and then a what appears to be a lavender tile, might be pink, can't quite tell from this image, but then a tile just in the middle there, and it looks looks like gums and teeth. It's brilliant. And then we got tons of Technic panels to help shape this incredible shirt design. And then look at all four of these red arms. The spikes on the shoulders, using these new construction faceplate pieces, you know, the ones that came on sets much like this one here. But yeah, you, using them to mimic the shape of like buff muscles is fantastic. Honestly, this mock is just packed full of brilliant part usage, incredible shaping, and it is very, very accurate to the source material. It's a masterpiece. It's just so delightful to see Ben 10 characters come to life with Lego bricks. Yeah, I mean, sure, we got the official Ben 10 construction sets, and I loved them. I thought they were fantastic. The pieces in them are great, and yes, they were a little bit limited with what they could do, but like, hey, what they did do was brilliant. But I don't know, seeing these figures, it made me want more. I wanted to see some of the classic Ben 10 aliens and other cool ones like Four Arms. So seeing someone build a mock of Four Arms, it kind of fulfills that dream a little bit. It's probably the closest we'll ever get to construction Ben 10 Lego sets. Of course, this isn't a set, it's a mock, but you know, it's a delight to see it. Feels like a dream come true. Peter Shaker is our next builder, and they have recreated Snero. Man, the Ben 10 episode where, like, Snero debuted, that was always on Cartoon Network when I was a kid. I watched that so many times. Anyway, how good does this look? Once again, super accurate to the source material, and they've captured that Pharaoh look quite nicely. You know, if you're not too keen on building a Ben 10 mock, but you like Egypt, there's a lot of stuff you could learn here if you wanted to build a mummy kind of character. Now, my favorite detail here has to be the Omnitrix logo on the shoulder. It's using some of those dots quarter tiles here to perfectly capture the shape of that logo. That's such a simple but incredibly effective way to build that. And I remember as a kid, like, thinking about building Ben 10 mocks, it was that Omnitrix logo that always, like, tripped me up. I was like, it's kind of crucial, but I don't really know how you could recreate it with Lego pieces. Well, with more modern Lego pieces, it's not too difficult. And then I believe there's a tire wrapped around the edge of that as well, just to round it off a little bit more and make it just that little bit more accurate. It just looks so good. Also, the way that they've used some of these Ray Ultra Build cloth pieces to mimic the wraps that you would find on a mummy, that's amazing. I love that Ray Ultra Build set, man. It has great pieces, and that cloth on it, I've seen so many wonderful uses for it, and this is among one of the best ones. If you don't have that Ray Ultra Build set, go and buy it. It's a great little parts pack, and it's pretty cheap online, thankfully. Well, last I checked, who knows, maybe it's gone up overnight. The Lego aftermarket is a crazy, crazy place with expensive stuff everywhere, so, you know. Who knows? Still, great set. The pieces have been excellently used here. And the same could be said for some of these sword pieces on the head. They also convey those wraps quite nicely. Then you've got this really thin but very poseable limb design. Everything on here is so well done. Peter, you nailed this. Good job. Alex Mertens has built one of my favourite Ben 10 aliens, it's Cannonbolt. Now, it is worth mentioning, I was 10 years old when Ben 10 came out, and my name is also Ben. I love this show, it was so much fun to watch. And yeah, whenever Cannonbolt came on, it made me very happy, I always thought he was really cool. But you see, the look of Cannonbolt, I always thought it was, it was cool because of how round he was and he could turn into a ball, whatever, but that circular design, how the heck could you ever recreate that with Lego? Just doesn't even look like Lego. But Alex Mertens, well, he's the king of smooth, round, and organic textures and designs. So of course he was able to nail that look. Now one notable piece that Alex has used to achieve this look is this white balloon segment. We can see them used here on this Friends balloon set. And if you get enough of these segments, of course, you can create that balloon. But if you use those segments individually like Alex did here, you can use them for the edges of the face, or you can put them on the bottom of the arms. And now you can more easily mirror that rounded and like puffy look that Cannonbolt has. It just looks wonderful, doesn't it? Now, of course, many other pieces are used here to achieve this aesthetic. You know, I love these key orange round corner dome pieces. These appear on this friend set here. You can see that they're used on the sides or the edges of this awning. Four of them together, it helps really recreate the official design and it looks so accurate and so good. 
Now for Grey Matter, and Bra Onicles is the person who built this one. Now look, Grey Matter is a tiny character, so they're decently easy to translate into Lego. Well, easy in terms of, you know, they're not going to cost you heaps of money or require you to use hundreds of pieces. It's a pretty, like, affordable build. You don't have to build a huge Titan like we saw before on Forearms. That's going to probably be a little bit more pricey given how many pieces are in that. But hey, size matters not, and this build still looks accurate and incredibly well made. I love seeing these bar holder with clip pieces being used for the fingers. I think it just is a great finger design. You could easily translate that onto any different construction character. But the look of these pieces, it mimics Grey Matter's fingers rather well. A good design and an accurate design, we like to see it. Now also on the face, we can see the mouth area here uses two of these rounded 1x2 plates, and they're not quite connected together. They're just sort of slightly offset, and as a result it looks like it is just a sort of slightly open mouth design. I love that, it's a great way to build this mouth, especially at this scale. Yeah, this is a really great take on the character. And now, Panuvara has recreated your favourite and mine, it's Accelerate. Oh, the accuracy here is uncanny, it's so well made. We've got some brilliant part usages all throughout this, like for example, on the legs, using some of these teal brick separators. I think that's a genius way to use that piece, which, yeah, a lot of people do tend to use in a lot of different mocks, but I don't know, I've never felt that it's looked good. This is a really good way to use that piece, and it stops looking like a brick separator, it just perfectly captures the rough shape that we see in the source material. A fantastic way to use what is a pretty common piece. We've also got a white Ruru mask on the torso, and then that same Omnitrix logo that we've been seeing across pretty much every one of these builds. That there is on the centre of the chest, and I like the way of attaching that there, taking advantage of the white Ruru's gap at the top of the head, and then using that as a way to just sort of sandwich that onto the body and actually attach the Omnitrix logo. It's a good idea. The head design's quite nice, uh, but I really like this very clever part use on here. You might not notice it, but if you look a little bit more closely, you can see that there is in fact a teal chameleon piece being used on the head. That's a very clever way to inject just that little bit more teal into the design, but also a great way to recreate some of the black lines that we see on uh, Accelerate's eyes in the source material. Very, very clever. Old mate Daniel Brickson has built Echo Echo. This is another huge mock, but it just perfectly nails the exact look of the character. I mean, you know, look, yes. It does cost a lot more to build something that is this big. It's a lot of pieces in that. It's going to take up a lot of space too. But building at a larger scale, it does actually give you a lot of room to play with and more surface area to cover. You know, sometimes building like a smaller mock, you actually have a lot less room. So adding in details can be tougher because there's just not a lot of area for you to build off of. There's less space to add stuff. So look, if you have the parts, build bigger. It actually gives you a lot more opportunity, a lot more places for you to connect pieces onto. And sometimes that larger size allows you to play with pieces in different ways that you just couldn't do on a smaller build. Suddenly those huge parts, you can more easily integrate them. And now it is also worth mentioning, this is a digital mock. So, you know, you don't actually have to pay for any of the pieces when you're building digitally. So why not build a digital mock and not have to worry about parts or time or the space that it'll take up? There's certainly a lot of pros to building digital. And doing that allows you to just copy and paste this mock, and then you can very effectively mimic the powers of Echo Echo. This is a fantastic photo. But yeah, the build itself, yeah, I love this mouth design, those eyes are brilliant, everything's so active and also so expressive. Daniel Brickson's done a great job of really conveying the character. And the life behind the character as well. This is wonderful. Now we got Care Creations and he's built Stinkfly. Okay, so these wings, man, they're the best. Nah, but, so, okay, last night, I was checking my phone before I went to sleep and I saw this collab get posted and I was like, whoa, these are amazing. I'm totally going to talk about these tomorrow morning. And the mock I was most transfixed by was Stinkfly and his wings. Look at the wings. They're so accurate to the source material. They have such a dynamic shape to them and they're entirely spring green. That colour is still somewhat new, which means that you're not always going to have a huge variety of pieces to play with in that colour. But despite that, Care Creations made an incredible wing design. In fact, I was falling asleep thinking about this wing design, trying to reverse engineer it in my head, understand how it would have worked. Dude, this mock got into my psyche and I was thinking about it in the dream world. That's some good stuff. Now this head design's wonderful. I love especially how it's using this piece that appears in LEGO Dream sets. Mr. Oz, this minifigure here, has that hourglass piece on their torso that comes in this set just next to it here. And yeah, honestly, that piece is a great way to build the Omnitrix logo that we see on the center of the face of Stinkfly. That's such a clever way to build that logo at a bit of a smaller scale. And it still look roughly accurate. A lot of the body parts on this use the tentacle pieces that came in the wonderful Doctor Strange 2 set, this one that you're seeing here. Yeah, this set was such a good parts pack. 
back, and it's just lovely to see all the pieces in this set being used so well on this creation. And then we got what appears to be unprinted pterodactyl heads in olive green, and they are the like tips of these tentacles at the bottom here. And now Brick Diamonds has built Ripjaw. Seeing them use a Rakshi headpiece as like the basis of the head design, and then Brick Diamonds has decked it out with all sorts, you know, adding in things like teeth, eyes, this little doodly bopper on the top of the head. It's all sensational. And it's great to see a Rakshi piece at the centre of all of it. It's weirdly accurate. Now there's a great like fish skin vibe to this mock. All these smooth textures, it looks like they've just jumped out of water and their skin's all wet. So there's something very aquatic about it, which is of course incredibly appropriate. But my favourite little bit here has to be this 2x2 two two curved slope on the torso that has a nice printed pattern on it. Now this actually came on the recent Hedwig set and it's meant to be feathers. But in this context, it looks like fish scales. That's so, so clever. Great way to use that printed piece and apply it to a brand new context but have it work flawlessly. I adore this mock. And at long last, DV Mox has built Ghost Freak. The shaping on this mock is phenomenal. Lots of CCBS armor pieces, Technic panels, those large invasion from below spike pieces. Man, it all works so well together. And yeah, I think it does recreate the look of Ghost Freak surprisingly well. Yeah, it's funny because all of these light bluish gray parts, I think traditionally they'd work better as armor. Whether it's like sci-fi armor or armor that you would see on some type of robot. Whatever it is, I think traditionally these pieces would be used for a very different vibe. But I don't know. In this context it works so well for a ghost character. I wouldn't have said these pieces would work for an apparition of sorts, but here you go. It's interesting how that works, isn't it? Now these big finger claws are great. The wisp at the bottom here and how it flows off in all the right ways, it's magnificent. And then all these tentacles on the torso, very accurate and very very well executed too, and wonderfully creepy, which you'd expect. Now these bent tentacle elements, they appear in white on the Lego Piranha Plant set that came out not too long ago. We can see them as the lips on the Piranha Plant here. And then Cole's Earth Dragon Evo has these same pieces in black on the tail at the back here. The way the tail kind of rounds off there too, that exact piece is also seen on this mock too. It's at the back of the image unfortunately, but if you look at the front you can see those exact same pieces in gold. Both of them as well, they're used for the horns. Yeah, that new macaroni style piece that's being used here, it might be one of the best new LEGO elements they've ever made. And seeing it in action on this mark, ah, oh, they just rock. This truly is a terrifying, beautiful build. And all these Ben 10 mocks today, they are mind-blowingly good. This was an incredible collab with all sorts of phenomenal builds and phenomenal builders as well. Be sure to check the links in the description below and check out more from these builders. If they built these good Ben 10 mocks, you better believe they've built all sorts of other good stuff, so please go check out what they've made. If you've got a collab coming up or one that you've already posted but you'd like to see on the Binacle Inspiration series, be sure to email it to the submission email and I'll do my best to put it into an episode. And do remember the only way to submit stuff to the show is through that submission email. If you contact me through social media, I unfortunately cannot accept it. That is purely based around the fact that it's all in one location for me. And then if I do want to kind of filter through and find something, I don't have to be like, oh yes, that was sent to me on Instagram on April 22nd. Let me scroll through a thousand messages until I find it. I still can't find it. Oh, where is it? But all in one place just makes it a thousand times easier for me. So thank you for bearing with me, but it will have to be through that submission email. I cannot accept it otherwise. I will forget about it. That's why. But feel free to message me on Instagram and just chat. If you want to ask me a question or something, that's the place to do so. If you ask me a question through the submission email, probably won't reply to it there. That's just for submissions. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Love you tons. Some incredible builds today. Thank you and good night.